Welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss the new profile pack space for Espresso. So let's begin. The new V2 profile pack update has three new profile pack spaces that have been included. One of these new additions is the Espresso inbox, which houses 43 new profiles. Before going into why Sam and the team have designed the Espresso profiles the way they have. Let's start with why we have added the Espresso workspace. The team behind the link is no stranger to the barista competition world. Here, they have continued to refine many of their coffee skills. Whether it be through being a competitor themselves or directly involved in supporting people throughout their coffee competition campaigns. Being involved in competitions for the better part of a decade has given them the perfect framework to chase perfection through the espresso format. The World Barista Championship Sensory Evaluation Sheet is one of those key pieces to this framework, giving clear expectations and tangible points of analysis to allow a commonly perceived view of what is a fantastic espresso experience. We have used that assessment framework regarding both taste and tactile balance. To work on an espresso-focused roast that would be suitable for a large majority of different coffees, as well as a wide range of processing styles. The first challenge we faced was the many possible variables that can affect espresso's extraction. We needed to establish a way to simplify and control certain variables. This led us to establish some fixed, non-changing constants for the espresso recipes. By factoring in this, it gives significantly fewer variables. This makes it possible to establish an algorithm within the Lynx profile selector. That is tailored specifically for espresso. The first major constant needed was a target brew ratio. For the link and coffee roasted on the final version of the espresso pack, we worked out that they are best extracted to a 1 to 2.25 concentration. Though the exacting recommended dose remains flexible for that brew ratio, we like working with a range that is between 20 and 21 grams of ground coffee in the portafilter for an extraction range of 45 to 48 grams of espresso out. This extraction range was tested with multiple contact times for the same roasts. The window for this parameter was quite large. We found that a good extraction could be achieved within a broad range of 17 to 35 seconds. If we had to be very picky, we would say that the best extractions typically landed in a contact range that's between 22 and 28 seconds. This concept of tailoring a roast curve to extraction parameters is quite common in the coffee industry and is what we often call roasting to a concentration. Doing this allows us the opportunity to tailor a roast curve for your coffee that will suit being prepared within that extraction window and work well over a multitude of equipment and water types. So let's start to talk about the roast curves. The best starting point is to have a general look at how the espresso profile differs from the Omni, Cupping, and Filter Packs. To do that, we will now pull up the same profile number over the four inboxes. Our base today for this demonstration is the Profile 205 Espresso. We will then use the Comper function to open 205 Omni, 205 Cupping D-Pack, and lastly, 205 Filter B-Pack. Our focus is on the espresso profile, so our comparisons will be made on how the other roast styles vary to that one. The first notable aspect we see is that it is quite clear that espresso has the longest total roast duration when looking at all the profile packs. This is essential. It makes sure the espresso roast is soluble enough within the concentration parameters we are targeting. More solubility allows us to extract more of the desired dissolvable compounds during the target extraction range in order to achieve a balanced espresso shot. Next, let's look at the starting point. We will notice that the target roast pitch for the espresso visually tapers down much earlier to have a lower, flatter heat arc when compared to all of the other roast styles. This taper off occurs midway through the initial dry phase of the roasting process. We have set the profile up in this manner to ensure that the coffee is not prone to dryness or structural issues that can be presented texturally or in the finish of an espresso. A thing to remember here 
is that the link is a fluid bed air roaster. Though we want to increase the solubility of the roast to be tailored to the extraction method desired, we also need to be aware that the main convection of heat is hot air. To successfully roast with this heat source, three key factors need to be addressed. Firstly, how we apply the heat. Secondly, when do we apply this heat? Lastly, how much of this heat do we apply for the espresso profiles we have created? All of these factors have been carefully calculated and considered. To find the right balance point, we have chosen to spend a larger percentage of the roast in the initial dry phase when compared directly to the other packs. To achieve this, we have adjusted the roast momentum to a more slowly climbing curve once the preheat has finished. Next, like the other profile packs, the mallard phase is also placed in high importance to still spend a good portion of the roast in. To ensure this will happen, we have opted for a pushed back first crack that can occur around the 8 minute and 10 second mark to the 8 minute and 35 second mark with the optimized range for the first crack we are targeting happening between 8 minutes and 10 seconds to 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Another aspect to note is the Espresso Profile Pack will have the softest audible first crack and with some coffees can be harder to detect with certainty when compared to how they roast on the other profile styles. This is due to the softer heat increase coming into the first crack that is spread over the longer total roast time. The last differentiating aspect to note about the espresso profiles is that the cracking temperature will be notably lower than the cupping and filter but a little bit higher than the Omni if you were to roast the same coffee across the four different styles. On average, expect the temperature of the cracking point to occur five to six degrees lower than the cupping pack and one degree lower than the filter pack if you are roasting the same coffees over the different styles. For very quiet cracking coffees on espresso, this can also be used as a handy reference tool. You can use it to be able to note a crack temperature on a profile pack like any of the five cupping packs, which typically have the most audible crack. Then if finding it harder to detect for the espresso pack, you can subtract five to six degrees of the first crack temperature from the referenced cupping pack to establish the cracking temperature for your espresso roast with the profile differences hopefully now clear. Let's now move on to getting an espresso profile suggestion from the Link app. What you will notice with the V2 update is that there are now espresso specific solutions when making a new sample entry. This prompt will be made from the second pop-up screen. Once that is selected, then proceed to enter your volume by weight density and process of the coffee to get the recommendations. When using the advanced dial in function, there is also a new espresso selection. If using the advanced dial in, you will notice the espresso selection second from the bottom in the top drop down selection. Make sure to select this before continuing to enter the remaining data needed for this function. Now going back to the main menu. Let's find a profile suggestion for the washed Colombian sample we have selected to roast for today's demonstration. So let's click the new sample entry. Then select Espresso. Now we enter volume by weight density of 64. Then select the process as washed. When we click Done, we see the population of the suggested profile as well as the suggested development range for our coffee. Let's find this profile and get roasting. Start by connecting our link to the studio. We are going to click on the profile table, then select the Espresso inbox. Next, we look for profile 204, and we will send that to the roaster. If we have the V2 profile pack downloaded and installed, we can also search for the profile directly from the unit. Pushing the menu button on the far right four times, then play when we reach the profile pack. Next, use the plus or minus buttons to navigate to the espresso inbox. When found, push play to load. Lastly, when loaded, 
Use the second from the right button to open the inbox and search for profile 204. Then push play to select. With the profile selected, it is now time to set the development percentage ranges. Using the plus or minus buttons on the far left, adjust the development percentage range to a figure within the suggested range from the app. Today, I want to roast this washed Colombian to 18.5%. Once I have that range set up, I push the play button to move on to the batch size selection. Then, I will proceed to place in the green coffee. When that is set, we will push the play button once more to start the roasting process. From there, sit back, relax, and let the link do its thing. The only input needed is if a user is logging the first crack to activate their DTR. If doing so, note that the crack is most likely to occur around 8 minutes to 8 minutes and 30 seconds. When the development percentage range is achieved, the roast will then commence to move into the cooling mode with the espresso pack. It is most recommended that these coffees be roasted, aged for a few days, and then brewed as the ideal window we have discovered is between five to nine days off roast. But if you do not have the time to wait, straight off roast, your coffee can still be enjoyed. When these espresso pack roasts are this fresh, they will still present with great clarity and structure. You just might notice that the flavor expression is a touch shy when they are compared to the same roast in a few more days if you had waited and aged. A general piece of advice. If you want to drink espresso coffee straight off roast, we believe the Omnipack is a more suitable roast style for a coffee more suitable to earlier consumption. And that is a wrap. Hopefully, this video has answered a lot of your questions, as well as helping you to realize that great espresso roasting has never been easier. From our team, we wish you good luck with all your espresso preparations, whether you are at home, in your coffee shop, or preparing coffee for a competition. As always, happy roasting.